Now that you have already seen some of the surfaces and borders of the heart in a specimen in situ, now we have removed the heart to study its external features. So as you can see here, heart is a conical shaped structure. So it is roughly the size of a closed fist. This conical structure consists of an apex which is directed downwards to the left and a base which is directed posteriorly and to the right. What is the location of the apex? The apex of the heart is located in the left fifth intercostal space, a little medial to the midclavicular line. And the base faces posteriorly and the structures related are the structures present in the posterior mediastina. Now what are the surfaces of the heart? Being a conical structure, it has some surfaces and some borders. So the moment we remove the pericardium, this is the appearance of the heart. This surface is called as the anterior surface and since this surface is related to the body of the sternum as well as to the costal cartilages, the surface is also called as sternocostal surface. Let us see what are the chambers that can be seen in the sternocostal surface. The sternocostal surface includes this chamber which is formed by the right atrium. This chamber which is the largest chamber that can be seen in the sternocostal surface. This surface, this chamber is called as the right ventricle. Also on the left side we can see a portion, a small portion of the left ventricle till the apex. So there are mainly three chambers that can be seen on the sternocostal surface but majority is formed by right ventricle. Separating the atria above from the ventricles below is a groove which encircles the whole heart like a crown. This groove is called as the coronary sulcus because it looks like a crown. It is also called as the atrioventricular groove. Because of the presence of the large blood vessels that emerge out of the ventricles, the atrioventricular groove is incomplete on the anterior surface. It can be seen clearly on the right side only. So separating the right atrium from the right ventricle is a groove. This is the right part of the anterior atrioventricular groove. The groove here is not clear because of the presence of this fat layer which is covered by the visceral layer of serous pericardium which is also called as the epicardium. So this groove is filled with fat which is called as epicardial fat. Beneath the epicardial fat in this groove we will find the right coronary artery and we will also find some veins crossing this groove they are called as the anterior cardiac veins. Now separating the right ventricle and left ventricle on the anterior aspect is a groove. This groove can be called as anterior interventricular groove. So in the anterior interventricular groove, again which is not clear because of the presence of epicardium and epicardial fat, we will find a vein and an artery. The artery present in the anterior interventricular groove is the anterior interventricular branch of the left coronary artery and the vein that accompanies it is called as the great cardiac vein. So all these grooves will be dissected and the blood vessels will be shown in another video. Now what are the borders that separate the sternocostal surface from the other surfaces? So here you can see a border. This border is called as the right border of the heart. This border is called as the left border and this one is called as the inferior border. So, separating the sternocostal surface from the surface on which the heart rests. So, the surface on which the heart rests is called as the inferior surface or also called as the diaphragmatic surface because it is related to the central tendon of the diaphragm. So, separating the sternocostal surface from the diaphragmatic surface is the inferior border. So, as I had already told, this is the anterior interventricular groove. The anterior interventricular groove, it runs till the inferior border and then it continues posteriorly or inferiorly with the posterior interventricular groove. So here on the inferior border will be a small notch, that notch which is very close to the apex of the heart, 
is called as incisura apicis cordis. Now let us see the features on the inferior surface or the diaphragmatic surface. So I am just lifting the heart like this. You can see the inferior surface here. So this is the inferior surface or the diaphragmatic surface. There is a groove that separates the surface into two parts. So this is formed by the right ventricle and this is formed by the left ventricle. So this groove is called as posterior interventricular groove. So you can trace the anterior interventricular groove through the incisura epicis cordis. It continues with the posterior interventricular groove. The posterior interventricular groove will lodge posterior interventricular branch of the right coronary artery along with a vein called as the middle cardiac vein. So to say once again sternocostal surface is mainly formed by right atrium, right ventricle and a little by the left ventricle. The major chamber that forms it is the right ventricle. The inferior surface or the diaphragmatic surface is mainly formed by the left ventricle and the little part is formed by the right ventricle and the groove that separates them is called as the posterior interventricular groove. Now, now I will turn the heart to show you the opposite surface of the apex which I told as the posterior surface or the base. So for that I am just turning the heart. Yes. So this is the apex, the exact opposite surface here. This surface is called as the base or the posterior surface. When we look at this surface, what we find is openings of so many veins. So this is the opening of the superior vena cava and this is the opening of the inferior vena cava. So this chamber that receives these two vena cava is the right atrium. Here we can see four other openings. These are the four openings of the right and left pulmonary veins. So this chamber is the left atrium. So the base of the heart is mainly formed by left atrium that receives the four pulmonary veins and a small portion is formed by the right atrium that receives the vena cava and we can see a groove separating the two. This groove is called as the interatrial groove. Now I will show you the posterior surface and inferior surface together. For that I am holding at the apex of the heart. So when we look at this aspect, we can see the base or the posterior surface and the inferior surface together. We can see a continuous groove here that separates the atria above from the ventricles below. So this is the posterior part of the atrioventricular groove or, or the coronary sulcus. In the coronary sulcus, we will have the terminal part of the right coronary artery and the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery and the anastomose in this coronary sulcus somewhere in this point. This point represents the meeting point of the interatrial groove, atrioventricular groove and the posterior interventricular groove. So this point is called as the crux of the heart. The coronary sulcus also lodges the largest vein that drains the heart which is called as the coronary sinus. This is the right border of the heart. On the right border of the heart, this is the superior vena cava draining into the upper part of the right atrium and this is the inferior vena cava draining into the lower part of the right atrium. Present connecting the two vena cava is a groove present along the right border of the heart. This groove or sulcus is called as sulcus terminalis. Corresponding to sulcus terminalis, on the interior aspect of the right atrium, we can see an elevation which is called as crista terminalis that represents the remnant of the right venous valve of sinus venosus. So to summarize once again, heart is a conical structure with an apex formed mainly by the left ventricle and the base directed posteriorly which is also called as the posterior surface. This is the anterior surface or the sternocostal surface. The major chambers forming are the right atrium, right ventricle and the left ventricle. The grooves seen are the anterior part of the atrioventricular groove that lodges the right coronary artery. 
anterior interventricular groove that lodges the anterior interventricular branch of the left coronary and the great cardiac vein. This is the inferior border that separates the sternocostal surface from the inferior surface. Inferior surface or diaphragmatic surface is mainly formed by left ventricle and right ventricle separated by the posterior interventricular groove that lodges the posterior interventricular artery along with the middle cardiac vein. On the posterior aspect, this forms the posterior surface or the base which is mainly formed by left atrium and right atrium separated by the interatrial groove. This represents the coronary sulcus and the meeting point of interatrial groove, coronary sulcus and posterior interventricular groove is called as the crux of the heart. In the next video, we will dissect out the epicardial fat to demonstrate the coronary vessels and the cardiac veins. Thank you for your patient listening.